Hey everybody, welcome back. I want to talk to you today about lossless scaling with frame generation. We covered this back in January and it, it was a really interesting concept at the time, but wasn't really ready for prime time at that point. They have now updated the program twice since then and the newest iteration of the program has a not only a two time mode, but a three times mode for frame generation. So what that means is instead of doubling your frame rates in supported games, you can now triple your frame rate in supported games. It does come with an additional GPU load, which might mean depending on what GPU you have, that tripling your frames might kind of push the limits of your system. What I have found is that the two time mode, in other words, doubling your frame rate works much better than the tripling your frame rate option. It's much smoother on my system. What is for sure is that it has really come a long way in the last couple of updates and the program is excellent. Great option, offers some really nice advantages over the frame gen mod and we'll get into that as well. So let's take a look at the program here. So what this is, is lossless scaling with frame generation version 2.1. It's been optimized over the previous version to provide less latency and less artifacting. And like I said, it now has the three times refresh mode. So it'll give you three times your frame rates. Now the minimum recommended base frame rates that you should be getting in the sim in order to use this is a minimum of 30 FPS at 1080p or 40 FPS at 1440p. That's for the two times mode, doubling your frame rate mode. So what we're gonna do, and I'll show you here in a second, is limit your frame rates in the sim to half your monitor refresh rate, and then using the double version to double your frame rates, or limiting your frame rate, let's say you have a 120 hertz monitor, limiting your frame rates in the sim to a third of your monitor refresh rate, which in that case would be 40 FPS, and then using the times three option to triple it up to 120. So let's take a look at the program. So here's the program. The layout is very, very simple. The scaling is what this program was originally designed to do, and that was back six, seven years ago. And I won't go into the scaling now because really, Scaling is not something we're going to be using this for. What everybody's going to want to be using this for is the frame generation section. So for scaling mode, over here on the left, you want to keep it on auto and just leave it alone. And scaling type, you want to have selected to off. Now here for frame generation, you have the option of off, 2.1 or 1.1. We want 2.1. And mode is either times 2 or times 3. And as I mentioned, I like to use times two. That's been the best option for me. The rest of these options I leave off. You can select draw FPS, which what that will do is show you the FPS counter in the upper left corner of the sim. And we'll get to that here in a second. Now, the way the program works, you see this capture API. I leave it on DXGI, which is the default. What these three options are, these are basically the way this program works is it just captures what is displayed on the screen and then tries to predict what the next image, what the next frame is going to look like and then generates one frame in between the two. If you're using the three times mode, it will generate two frames between the two actual frames. So these capture APIs are, are the exact same technology that's used by things like OBS Studio, which I use to stream. So it's just a screen capture. It's not actually working on the game level. It's just capturing what's on your screen. I just leave capture API at DXGI, which is normal. If you've got more than one GPU, which I don't know, seems rather unusual to me, but you can select whichever GPU you want to run the program. I actually do have the, you know, the Intel, the onboard Intel GPU, of course, which doesn't do anything because I have the RTX 3080 Ti, but you want to select whatever your GPU is output display, auto, and just leave everything else. What I have here in the settings, 
I have a, a scale hotkey. So they call it, because the program is called lossless scaling, the option to turn it on and turn it off is the scale button up here in the right hand corner. Even though we're not scaling, as I said, we're using the frame generation per portion of the program. That's my hotkey to turn on and turn off this program. You can start it as an administrator if you want to. Don't do that. You can start minimum, minimized at Windows startup if you if you want the program to start automatically when you start your computer, that's up to you. Minimize the tray, I leave that off. Everything else is the same. I just leave everything, all this stuff off. If you want to set a hotkey, just click the X and then hit whatever key combination you want. And you will get that saved. So again, LSFG 2.1 times 2. Now in order to set this up, we need to go into NVIDIA Control Panel. All right, here in NVIDIA Control Panel, what you want to do in your global settings is set your maximum frame rate to whatever your monitor refresh rate is, in my case, which is 60. Then you want to go into your program settings for Microsoft Flight Simulator, and you set your maximum frame rate for half of your monitor refresh rate, which in my case would be 30. Or let's say if you had a 120 hertz monitor like we were talking about earlier, you might want to set it for 120 in the global settings and 40 in the program settings and then use the times three option. Now another thing you can do is add loss of scaling with frame generation to your program settings here in NVIDIA Control Panel. And you do that simply by clicking add and it's going to show you the recently used apps that you have. And you can simply come here and select loss of scaling. I've already added it so I don't have to do that. And then you can come here to lossless scaling. And one of the things that they say to try to use, to try to help with the image artifacts that I'm going to show you is to use the vertical sync and turn it on at the program level for lossless scaling. You can try that. We'll talk about that here in a second. So now that the program is set up, we can go into the sim. We're here at St. Kitts Airport in the Britain Norman Islander. You might not notice it so much right here, but there is some jitteriness to this image as we move around. And now let's turn on the lossless scaling frame generation. Let's hit scale. It's going to take five seconds to turn the frame generation on. You can see the blink there in the image. Now you can see just smooth as glass absolutely smooth as glass now let's turn it off again here and we'll go inside the airplane and look around and this is with the frame generation off and you can see particularly if i move slowly how much jitter there is to the to the image now i'm going to hit the scale button again and there we go Look how butter smooth it is. The change in color, by the way, for some reason, my NVIDIA filters are turning on and turning off with the same key combination, even though it isn't set to do that. I don't know why it's doing that. But now the one thing you're going to notice is like on that pole there, or sometimes on these poles here, these light poles, you might see a little bit of kind of a, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? The image can distort just a tiny little bit when you're looking around. See on the edges of the windows there, it'll do that a little bit. But here's one of the other really cool things. For people who like using the frame gen mod, but you can't because either you're using a heads-up display or you're using in-sim apps such as the Navigraph charts app like this like if you're if you're using the frame gen mod with this it's going to have a, a really bad distortion as you move your head around and I'll show you that in a second and you can see here with lossless scaling with frame gen no problems whatsoever now I'm going to turn lossless scaling off and then I will turn the frame gen mod on 
and I'll show you what I mean. See that? And the, he the heads up display is going to do the same thing. And again, let's turn off the frame gen mod in the sim. And now we will turn on frame gen with lossless scaling. Give it a couple of seconds to click on here. And there goes the, the color change again. And look, so we've got frame gen. All of your in sim apps and things like that, and menus and so on and so forth are going to look perfectly normal. Again, the only thing that I have noticed thus far, you can see on the edges of some of the, like the hard edges, sometimes they'll move a little bit. Now there is an option to turn it on three times. And for whatever reason, that doesn't perform as well for me as the two times scaling. Probably because I have a relatively slow monitor refresh rate. I mean, my monitor refresh rate is only 60. So it, it really works very, very nicely. Come out here and look around a little bit. See how the poles, you can see a little bit of distortion in that. But if you want some free frames, I mean, this is superb. It really has some nice advantages to it. So again, very easy program. It costs $7 from Steam. I think it's absolutely worth $7. In NVIDIA Control Panel, in the in-game setting for Microsoft Flight Simulator, you set your max frame rate at half your monitor refresh rate. In the global settings, you set the max FPS at your monitor refresh rate. So in my case, in the global settings, I would set it at 60. In the Microsoft Flight Simulator settings, I would set it at 30 in the NVIDIA control panel. You don't set it in the in-game settings itself. Do it via NVIDIA, NVIDIA control panel. And then simply turn on lossless scaling times two. It's going to give you that half frame rate back. I, I think it's a wonderful program. I think it's it, it's come huge leaps and bounds since the frame generation portion was added only a couple months ago. So I think we can definitely expect really, really good things in the future. There may come a time very soon here, it may even already be here, where this program is actually a better use case for you, depending again on whether you use in-game menus, whether you use a heads-up display and something like the 787, the 737, if you if you like using things like the charts, other types of apps like those which which show up as a menu in screen, and when you're using the frame gen mod, they have that stutter, that that you know terrible jitter. Loss of scaling with frame generation may right now be a better option for you, uh, very much so. And as a matter of fact. Uh, for seven dollars, there's just no question to me that it's worth a try. They have a very active Discord, and they have a big question and answer section on Steam. So I would encourage you guys to give this a try. I'm not saying it's better than loss of, uh, than than the frame gen mod. I'm not saying it's worse. There are different use cases for the two, and like anything with Microsoft Flight Simulator, you and I can discuss which one you prefer, which one you like better, which one works better for you. Some things might bother you with this one. Some things might bother you with the frame gen mod, whatever. This is a fantastic option to have two choices of what we can use right now is wonderful. The program is very simple. So I would just uh, recommend you guys giving this a try. And if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. And I hope you guys are having a fantastic day.